solve for the whatever delta y over delta x, and then you just show it. A lot of people think, well, that's not necessary because you're already showing it by equations, but we want to show up both. You know, we want to show the thinking behind the equations and not just the equations themselves. Okay. All, right. All right, other questions? No. All right, we're going to continue with experiments 8 and 9, chapters 10 and 11. And what we need to do for chapter 11 is we need to be able to draw the orbitals. <coughs> so. Well, here's some, uh, the 1s, the 2s, the 3s. You know. and we see that the 2s has a node in there and other stuff. But what we're going to do is we're just going to draw the 95% probability boundary. And so if we take a look at the 2s and the 2p orbitals, and what we would do is uh, we're going to draw an x, y, z coordinate system like this with x here, and y, and z. I don't know, right hand, left hand, it doesn't really matter. Actually, you know what? It doesn't make much difference. Okay, so if I draw a 2s orbital, um, how should I draw that out? Well, 2s orbital, we just draw out like this. What happened to all my pens? Okay, 2s orbital, draw out the 95% probability boundary. <coughs> we'll just call it a 2s. So we aren't going to get into it detailed, like for example, a node or anything like that. So the 2s orbital is just the general shape of that. Do the same thing for the P's, the two P orbitals. We aren't even going to color code these, um, but do you recall what the color coding is? Yeah, positive and and negative. Good. Why do we have to color code it? Somebody know? Show the polarity. Not the polarity, but it's not necessarily polarity. Oh. Yeah, the, the, the positive and the negative aren't referring to the polarity like a battery. You know, you have a positive terminal on the battery and a negative terminal on the battery. That, that would be polarity. But this is something different. This is not like the negative terminal of battery and the positive terminal of battery. This is, yeah, not the probability. The probability is given by this. The probability, we don't have negative probabilities. The only probabilities we're going to have are, are positive. It's not the spin. Do you have it in your notes? Because it's a negative hmm? Because it's a Yeah, the um, positive and negative come from the positive and negative come from the, not the charge, it wouldn't be like a battery, the battery would have a positive terminal and negative terminal because of the charge on those terminals. But the positive and negative here don't come from that. Penetration and shielding? It's not from penetration and shielding either. 
it, yeah, you would think it's electron rich and electron poor. We've seen it before. from this positive and negative yeah. the red and the blue uh, I'm sorry repulsion. Mm, it's not repulsion you know uh, well, here we have red and blue also. The red stands for the red stand. In this case, the red stands for negative charge. And the blue stands for positive charge. So the oxygen is uh, more negative, the hydrogen is more positive. So we pull them off. So. so does this, the red stand for negative charge here and positive charge here? The red is uh, more electron density, more negative charge. Blue is more positive charge. Is that the case? No, it's different. In the case, in this case, it's different. <laughs> okay, I, I, uh, this is what I said. I said this multiple times about the red and the blue. But um, I said, what is the square root of four? Plus or minus two. Well, tell me, which one is it? Is it plus two times plus two, or is it minus two times minus two? What is it? I want to know. I don't want, you know, if, if you have four, I want to know, did that four come from a plus two times a plus two, or did it come from a minus two times a minus two? Where did it come from? If you take the square root of four, can you tell me, did it come from plus two times plus two or minus two times minus two? Can't. Yeah, they, you can't. Bill, Bill's right. You can't tell. You can't tell. So if we take the wave function and square it, we get the probability function. When we look at the probability function, we have probability that's going to be in this lobe, and we have probability it's going to be in this lobe. We're going to we're going to have probability the electron can be in either lobe. But when we look at this, we've lost something because now when we take the square root of this, it can be <coughs> plus two or it can be minus two. And so mm, I called this. Did, did did anybody write down what I called this? I call this phase information, P-H-A-S-E. So we color code this. We know if we take the square root of this, it came from plus two. That is, this is the original wave function here. And if we take the square root of this side, it is minus, minus negative amplitude, <coughs> which means it looks like this. So we can go from here and square it, we get this. But if we take the square root of this, will we go back to this? No, we won't go back to this. The only way we can go back to this is if we encode this with phase information. So in other words, we lost information by squaring it. You always lose information by squaring it because all of a sudden you've lost track of whether it was positive or 
negative because when you square it, it doesn't matter, right? So, just why we care about negative since we only don't consider about positivity? Why do we care if it's negative? Um, amplitude versus positive amplitude, it's because of um, how waves interact. We haven't talked about, right, right now, you know, we don't care. Right? We don't care because um, it's of no significance to us yet. But in chapter 11, we have to start caring because in chapter 11, um, we're going to do a bit more. In fact, in, in, in chapter 10 and 11, what we want to do is we want to generate these kind of things. And so the reason we care about such things is um, because, you know, to generate an electrostatic potential map like this, we need some quantum mechanics software to do it. And the quantum mechanics software is not cheap. You know, this was done using Spartan. How much is Spartan now? Actually, you know what? I don't even know the price of Spartan. But what would you guess the cost on Spartan is, which is a quantum mechanics software? Five hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred. Uh, they won't give me the price, of, sorry. Uh, last time I checked, it was closer to $5,000. So, um, it's a very powerful program. It's, it's $5,000. You can charge pharmaceutical companies $5,000. You can charge other industries. You know, they, they don't have any hesitation paying $5,000 for this. However, um, we, we aren't going to pay right $5,000. Actually, the school did pay. The school paid, how much did the school pay? The school paid $18,000. $18,000 for a site license. So we have it. But we, we're, we have, right now we have an older version, but it's all right. So we, we do have Spartan, but you aren't always going to have access to Spartan. And so how do we generate this kind of information, you know, this kind of electron cloud, um, cheaply, free, in fact? We could do this free, but uh, just on pencil and paper. And so what we want to do is we want to be able to um, analyze molecules like this and generate uh, electron clouds and electron cloud density. In other words, we want to extract as much information uh, from the molecules as possible. And so we're going to need to, to, to know certain things. So well, let's take a look at some electrostatic potential maps here. This would be chloromethane, you can see. The red region would be negative. Most negative, most positive. So blue is positive. Why did they choose red as negative? You know, if you have a battery, which terminal is red? The, the positive terminal or the negative terminal? The positive terminal is always red on a battery. And so this always throws me. For loop, I always have to remind myself this is reverse. Because intuitively, I always think red is positive just because of batteries, but it's all right. I, I, I've finally gotten used to it, but it took a long time. And so when I see this, I can kind of see how the electron cloud is distributed, but there's more to it than this. You know, this, when I look at this, this is quite ionic. This is lithium hydride, Li plus, H minus over here. HF, this would be polar covalent. H2, this would be nonpolar. A covalent. Here's ammonia. Uh, you can see uh, the nitrogen here and the three hydrogens here. Something looked funny about ammonia. I had to give this one a, a second look. What looks funny about ammonia here? Uh, uh, yeah, it's just because of the way the hydrogens are angled. 
See, it's, it, the structure is trigonal pyramidal. And so that's why it looks pushed to the right a little bit. But does something look funny about ammonia? The hydrogens are seem to be negative. The hydrogens seem to be negative and the nitrogen seems to be positive. positive. And that's, that's wrong because nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen. Yeah. And so this one really looks weird. Because I spent all that time memorizing that positive is blue and negative is red until somebody else says, you know, I don't like that. And they wrote, and obviously these colors are totally arbitrary, right? And so Petrucci does it that way, but look at this one. This, they just had the computer, the software assign it. Positive as red and negative as blue. I wish Petrucci did it this way. If Petrucci did it this way, it'd be so much easier for me to visualize these. And so I, I had to spend a lot, a lot of time um, thinking about this. This is not standard, by the way. The standard is what Petrucci has. But, you know, it, it shouldn't make any difference, you know, whether positive is red or blue. You know, you should be able to determine it based on <coughs> what, it's some kind of reference point or some kind of standard. It, it's like the tables. A lot of people memorize, okay, the top of the activity series. The top of the activity series is the most reactive. But what if somebody decides to write an upside down activity series? Then you've memorized the top is the most reactive and now somebody threw you for a loop. Are you going to get it wrong or are you going to get it right? You know? And so get away from those kind of reference points and, and think of more universal reference points and so where it doesn't matter. And so it doesn't matter what color they use as long as I know, you know what should be negative and what should be positive then I can figure it out. And so here, this looks weird because its colors are inverted. <coughs> but then we go on. Um, this looks pretty normal. Do you recognize this species here? H2CO3. H2CO3. H2CO3 is carbonic acid. And so we can see the, the oxygen here, some negative charge build up. The hydrogens have some positive. It's a diprotic acid. You can tell by this. It looks like this. What is this species here? HCO3 minus. HCO3 minus is? This is bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is what we call an acid anion. You can see there's one hydrogen here. So the acidic. And we've got these two oxygens with negative charge built up on them. And then CO3 2 minus is? Carbonate. All right, this is electrostatic mass. <laughs> Let me come back to this in a minute. Well, let's take a look at carbonate. And so from, from carbonate, um, It's going to have a Lewis structure like this. Does that look like what we have there? Does this Lewis structure match that electrostatic potential map here? It should be, but it isn't. Well, uh, actually, you know, for carbonate, we can draw another um, resonance form. So let's draw this one here. I 
actually, you know, this one should be a short bond. This should be long bond, long bond. It doesn't look like we have that. Um, over here, this should be a short bond and these two long. And then we got the negative charges now on the top and the right. It doesn't look like that one either, nor does it look like the uh, final resonance form we could draw, which would be a double bond here. Something like this. And we add up the formal charges, so we get the minus two net charge. It doesn't look like any of these, does it? Yeah. Um, what it is, is all the bonds are equivalent. And the charge density on each of the oxygens is the same. And so the hybrid, if we take these three and, and, and make a hybrid, the hybrid would be a mix of all three. And it would be an even mix since all three of these have the same energy. And so each of the bonds would be what we would call a one and one third bond. <coughs> So the one and one third bond. And the electron density spread out over these three bonds. And then the oxygens will have two lone pairs fixed on it, and then one lone pair is kind of spread <coughs> out, or smeared out. And so we'll just draw that dotted like this. And each of these uh, oxygens would have a minus two thirds charge. How about, um, how about this? Does that uh, electrostatic potential map look like this? Yeah. It looks like this. Yeah. Where we can see the oxygens are going to be equal in charge. The bond lengths are all the same. We have a 2 minus charge. Why don't you draw out the structures for bicarbonate and tell me what you get? Let's take a look at that one next.